All right, Coach Hank, we've got a lot of good information when it comes to just the game in general. You've got a lot of knowledge about it. The physical game is something, though, when people really start to dig into it, that's got a lot of pieces to it. You've got some great expertise, I think, on not just what we always look at, which is the bowling side. Let's talk a little bit about the opposite side. Yeah, there's a little bit of the physical game that I, I kind of work with coaches a lot and players. And in many sports, we talk about the opposite arm. And we've seen in some bowling academy videos, I think you, you were in one with Carolyn, yep. talking about the opposite, and the, the, the opposite arm, that when we get into the motion, there's kind of a swimmer effect in some yeah. instances. There's a swimmer effect. Um, it's talking about a little bit more quiet effect with you, where it's just kind of stabilizer. But the thing that we see with a lot of players and coaches is they really don't even recognize what's going on with the opposite arm. And in many sports, you're thinking like football, baseball, and a baseball pitcher, even a, even a player in the field, he reaches out with a glove to throw a, to throw a ball or throw a pitch, mm -hmm. and the glove becomes a balance. And then he's throwing it, and it's a stabilization. But in bowling, so many times you say, hey, well, you need to get your opposite arm out there for a little bit of leverage, and they're like, huh? Exactly. So they lose track of that opposite arm. And many times we see a lot of that acceleration of, say, a 15-pound object as they accelerate to the bottom. There's not much force or resistance in the opposite arm, so it actually comes back too soon. Yeah. So many times I get with players and say, hey, we need to have you aware of what's going on with your balance arm. Yeah, it gets lost a lot of times. I mean, people focus so much on the ball side. What's the swing shape look like? Where does it fit in the timing window? There's so many places that when you focus on just the ball side, you really lose perspective on what the balance side is. And the balance arm opposite side, I've heard it referred to often as maybe the most important because it does affect immediately the body, the swing shape, the direction, the tempo and timing. Absolutely. It has such a big part in the game that it's identifying it has to be part of coaches uh, information nowadays. Absolutely, and you have a lot of different styles these days, and you, and you talk about the tra traditional style of the opposite arm being out just as a balance, a lot of the ladies, where it's just an acceleration and it kind of gets behind them a little bit, and the mistakes they make is it gets behind them too soon, so the shoulders get square too fast, the hips are still open, so in essence the ball's always going on a straight path up the lane versus the hips are saying I need to go the right, so they conflict with each other. So if you can get the shoulders and the hips to align, that means the swing aligns on the same path, easier to make and repeat shots. Easy. And then you get into the modern power players where we've talked in the past where they reach and they extend and then they get the little swimmer's motion to create that kind of that power move. It's the same thing as a pitcher extending a glove. You watch a, pit, a pitcher extend the glove, he's usually up. And in modern pitching, now they're teaching more of a bent elbow so we get more of a, of a load in that opposite side. And then you think back, and we talked a little bit about Chris Barnes and we'll probably show you some images of Chris Barnes where he extends that left arm, but it's actually a little bit bent. So he actually creates a little tension and been doing this for a couple of decades and had great success, one of the best players of all time. Easily. I like what you're bringing up about the fact that the extension doesn't always have to be away from the body and elongated. I think we can reference that a little bit to RG too, just a touch. When we talk about the distance of that lever versus the shorter distance now with the elbow bend, and it does affect how much or little torque you can get in the body, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you talk a little bit of RG, we talk bowling balls, because we know that if we extend the arms out and we get our objects farther away from us, it's a high RG. So they're slower. And it's going to be a player that's not as aggressive, right. can't be as quick, can't create as much rev rate. But now the player that's a little shorter, a little more loaded up, the RG or the mass gets closer to the body. So when he accelerates, it's quicker, faster. it's faster. Yeah. And so now I would urge you as coaches and players to start looking at some of these great players with some of these balance arms. We look at like a Barnes, we look at like a Mike Fagan where it was in front of his body and then it goes vertical. He never actually gets it away from his body too far. And he's the king of swing. Yeah. So there's many of those styles that are out there today. And now you think about even a two-handed player as they, as they rotate, this shoulder's open, this elbow's bent, and when they come through, this elbow comes straight up and out of the shot they've many times. already got the small uh, length there on that, sure. and that elbow coming up, so they've got a quicker rotation or a quicker torque in the, in the torso, therefore the momentum gets through faster. Absolutely, and these are things that kind of, as coaches and players, we kind of forget that, hey, that opposite... That opposite arm, is that balance arm, can create some more effects. Even if a person is not as big in stature, you look at a guy like Pete Weber, he's made a career out of being a power player, but you know he's created a huge lever with that. And you get a player like Belmo with a two-handed player, he's shorter, faster, quicker, Barnes with a little bit of bent elbow. So everybody's along the way has had some differences in using the balance arm, but they're aware of it. And the thing that misses today most is players kind of don't know. And so today we're going to show a couple different devices that we use and I use 
I like to put a little uh, a wrist weight or an ankle weight on the arm. A little two pound, one and a half weight. All it does is make a player aware. If you're going to notice real quickly in the videos that we do today, when the player puts that weight on, you're going to see a kind of a transformation of what, oh, wait a minute, there is an extra arm out there. And so there's a couple of different methods, and we're going to show you those in the video today. Wonderful. Great information regarding isolating a specific part of the physical game now. We're going a little further than just identifying it. We're going to kind of put it into motion and, and let the player be aware of it. So let's take a look at what you're talking about with the videos. Let's go see what happens when we start adjusting the balance arm for the players. So what we're going to notice today in a player like Isaac Sims is a better than average player. He's a very tall player, very long arms, and very long legs. And these are one of those players that is a great example of trying to take a look at that balance arm because the biggest thing is those are big long levers when they get moving if they get moving quickly and too quickly and too early then the shoulders square up too fast the shoulders close the, the, the uh, opposite arm gets behind them and all of a sudden the ball gets a little more up the lane and they're hoping that their hand-eye coordination is good enough to let it feed to the target so we're going to take a look at him without a weight or anything in his hand to make him aware of his balance arm and then we're going to take we're going to put it a wrist weight on him or ankle weight on him and we're going to have him throw some shots. We're not going to tell him what to think about or anything just to put the weight there and make him aware of it and let's take a look at the transformation we see without even you know telling him what to look for. So the best thing about this type of lesson or drill is making them aware of the balance arm and then all of a sudden they are aware of it having them throw shots with it on and with it off so they can see the difference of what's going on with that opposite arm. Okay, Coach Hank, we saw some really different improvements whenever we talked about the balance arm for a particular bowler here. On this video series, just putting that opposite arm balance weight to make him aware of that really made a difference in his physical game without him even knowing it. It's kind of fun to watch. Sure, and, and the, the, neat, the neatest thing was you put it on his arm, and we had told him about it in, the, in prior years and, and talked a little bit about it, but an instantaneous feedback that he's like, oh, wait a minute, that was amazing. I could get the ball to the right without really trying to feel like I had to do it with my hand. And we talked about that. If that balance arm gets too far back, then we are trying to do it with our hand and eye and release and everything. And all of a sudden, we took it back out of his hand. He threw another shot and he was like, wait a minute, I want to put that back on. <laughs> so it's amazing feedback instantaneously. He jumped right into it. He was perceptive to it. And all of a sudden, it may be something down the road that he's aware of whenever it's not feeling right. So it's something he can, he can address himself, make his own self-corrections, maybe even share it with a coach and, and have them make the recommendation too. But just, just the feedback of understanding it right away and being aware of it really made a difference in their game. So great tip. Absolutely. And coaches, I urge you to use these, these teaching tools and these devices to help these players because Many times, if they're not aware of it, you have to make them aware of it. And, and just a simple weight or just putting something in their hand makes them aware of that balance arm. And it, it lets us solidify that game. We work so hard, like you said, on the ball side and the opposite side needs to be worked on as well too. Absolutely, so take those tips, take them to your practice sessions, make sure you work on them with your coach. Hopefully you can start improving your scores with the simple things we're talking about right here in your game.